In my last lesson, I showed how to run DOS commands from a Windows Forms application, but I hit a problem. The tree command uses ASCII box drawing characters to show the branches, connecting directories and subdirectories. But when I try to show this in a text box, I get all kinds of weird characters. In this video, I'll explain what the problem is and how to fix it. OK, so here's what it looks like when it's been fixed. What's the secret? Well, let me first explain the problem. The problem is that the command window is like a trip back into the 1980s. It works pretty much the way that the old DOS operating system used to work. In fact, the command I'm running, tree, is an old DOS command, and the output is displayed using a limited set of characters with the integer values given by ASCII codes. The box drawing characters, for example, have ASCII codes in the range shown here, where 196 is a horizontal line, 179 is a vertical line, and so on. But in modern Windows-based applications, we generally work with Unicode characters. Unicode defines a much bigger range of characters, including characters in all kinds of non-European languages. The graphics characters in ASCII are still there in Unicode, but they have different values. This lesson is going to be about debugging. I have a problem and I want to fix it, but which debugging tool is going to help me to do that? First, let me explain how I didn't fix the problem. In my innocence, I initially assumed that converting between ASCII and Unicode characters would simply be a matter of setting the character encoding property in the start info object that initializes a process. I tried it and it didn't work. Well, my eventual solution, therefore, was to replace the problematic characters in the string returned by the tree command before displaying it in a text box. The replacing itself was straightforward. I just used this replace command to replace every occurrence of each ASCII box drawing character with the corresponding Unicode character. Now, before going any further, I should say that the actual characters and codes you see may be different than these according to your operating system, the fonts installed, and so on. And you may need to go through the same process that I'm about to show you in order to deal with any problems. Now, you may wonder how did I find which characters I needed to replace? And what do all these character codes here mean anyway? Let me introduce you to the immediate window. This is one of a number of invaluable tools integrated into the Visual Studio debugger. When solving problems like this, the immediate window is the place to start. So at first, I just put a breakpoint in my code. And then I run the project in the debugger. And I have to make sure that the immediate window is open. If not, select it from the debug windows immediate menu uh, item now once i've stopped at a breakpoint i can evaluate code in the immediate window at its simplest i can just enter a variable name such as s and that will show the string value of that variable at this point in the debugging but if i want to find the value of a single character i can evaluate a character at an index like this or like this. It turns out that the character here is one of the characters that I want to replace. I can see that its ASCII value is 192, so I make a note of that for future reference. OK, so there is a faster way to find out the other codes I need. So here I've copied these characters, the ones that should be box characters, but when I display them in my program, they aren't. I've copied them one by one out of the text box in the running application and pasted them into this string in the code of my project. This code is attached to a button click event handler. I've added a breakpoint here and now I debug my program. And in the immediate window, I can look at the characters one by one. S0, the character at index 0 of the string, S, index 1, and so on. So 
How do I go from that to these character codes? Unicode character codes can be entered into strings following slash u, as I've done here, but the codes need to be in hexadecimal. To find the ASCII and Unicode characters, I can simply find some charts online. Here are some charts that I've been using, but if you use Google, you can find many other sites which contain these sorts of character references. Unicode characters are shown in hexadecimal, but the ASCII codes are shown in decimal. Converting them is easy, though. Just enter the number into the Windows calculator, and it shows the hexadecimal equivalent here. So that's the value I entered into my code. And that's really all there is to it. Now I can run my code, and this time the tree displays pretty much the same way it does in the command window. So all the box drawing characters show the branches where they need to be shown. And I've also set the colors of the text box uh, and the font I've reset to mimic as much as I can the display of the command window to some extent. Now, after all that work, it has to be said that the DOS tree command isn't really all that useful. Not these days. It's a, it's a curiosity that's been left over from ancient times when all operating system commands were run from a prompt. Well, nowadays, you'd be better using the Windows Explorer to view directories or... You could write your own disk browser, and I showed exactly how to do that in an earlier project. My disk browser shows subdirectories in a collapsible tree view on a Windows form. And that's obviously a lot better than just having a static display of subdirectories, as I can with the DOS tree command. Still, the point of this lesson is not really how to resurrect ancient DOS commands. It's more to do with how to debug and fix problems using Visual Studio. And if you've never used the intermediate window before, well, I hope this gives you at least a few ideas about how useful it can be. Thanks for watching. To be notified whenever I upload new videos, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. And I'll see you again soon.